Oh, the BS has to stop. So this is not a clickbait video. I've been planning on making this video for a good long time. And I'm finally doing it because of a comment on one of my videos um, yesterday or the day before, where someone said my shooting sucked. <laughs> but trust me, I've got a very good explanation. And this is a problem I think we have in the industry. Maybe not so much in the industry, but more so at the range, where new shooters are getting advice from People have been shooting a long time, but don't really have the right experience. This is to those people who are saying, oh, you just need to practice, or you know what, you're not a very good shot. Well, if you are on a bench rest, specifically a bench rest with proper position, with a good scope, with a half decent rifle, you should be able to achieve half MOA groups with a good rifle. Now, a lot of people are saying when you're getting three inch groups at 100, oh, well, you just need to practice more. And honestly, that is the advice that I've followed for years, kind of a bit before I built the channel, a little bit into that, because I thought, you know what, maybe I'm the one who needs more practice. Maybe I just need to, to practice more. And I mean, I'm, I'm talking fully supported rifles with a sandbag in the front, sandbag in the back, proper cheek pressure, applying pressure on the ears of the rear sandbag properly. Uh, with a free floated barrel, etc., etc., like doing everything I can to make sure this rifle shoots. And people were telling me, oh, you know what, you probably just need to practice more. That's probably the deal. That's a whole lot of BS. That is not, that is not true. That is not true whatsoever. I mean, yes, obviously you need to have adequate skill in order to accomplish a half MOA or an MOA group, but people seem to make it seem like it's 90% the shooter and 10% the rifle, which is it's almost closer to the opposite. So I actually tested this theory. I brought out a new shooter who I think only shot a handgun once prior. He'd never shot a precision rifle. He'd never shot bench rest. I showed him how to do it, you know, basic, set up the rifle. Okay, don't put your hand up in the front because a lot of people, you know, they'll, they'll rest it on the front bag. They'll have it on the rear like this, but they won't be holding it. They won't be squeezing the ears on the stock of the rifle. They're gonna place their hand here and then try to make some shots. So I corrected them there, let it just sit on the front bag and have them squeeze the, the rear of this bag. And he was able to achieve a, I think this was a 0 0.3 inch group at 100. And he had never shot a precision rifle before in his life. And that wasn't my first indication of, of kind of what I was thinking, but it was pretty much the conclusion. It's pretty much my validating last fact that it's not so much the shooter, if you're talking bench rest, it's very much more so the rifle or the ammunition. So for example, if we're looking at a little Remington 783, just like this one, and you're only able to achieve a one MOA or two MOA, it's very well possible that this rifle is not capable of any more so than that. I mean, we have a lot of negative, we have a lot of uh, aggravating factors here that don't really give you a good chance at achieving such, such good results. For one, we have a very cheaply mass-produced rifle that's made at the very lowest cost. Like, their, their profit margins are extremely slim, and also their quality control, the barrel quality, is also not that great either. So those are a few things that aren't going to help you. Additionally, the stock on this is pretty much the cheapest stocks they can kind of throw on these, and they probably cost around $25 to manufacture in-house. So there are just so many things that aren't helping you achieve these results. Additionally, if you're using a 3 to 9 magnification optic, the odds of you achieving a 1 MOA or half MOA or 0.3 MOA group are also very slim. If you're using super cheap scope rings, there's so many factors that contribute to poor results that it can't just be summed up with, oh, well, bud, you just need to practice. That is probably some of the worst advice you can get, which is why I'm very kind of bothered when I hear, oh, you just need to practice more. The person in the comments said, well, you don't know how to shoot. You clearly need more practice. Actually, I think they just said you suck at shooting. <laughs> and I mean, it's like I could, I referenced some other footage that I did, so some groups that I did with my uh, custom rifle. Now this rifle I think is upwards of $6,000, okay? I feel like I ruined this rifle is I mean in Canada the prices are kind of lousy it's upwards of like five six hundred right now the prices are terrible you cannot expect half MOA groups with a Remington 783 yes your uncle is able to do it you know a guy or you once did it 
doing it once is like all the stars aligning. It could very well happen with this rifle, and it's not a half MOA rifle by any means. And having one that is able to do it, it doesn't mean that all the other ones in that batch are able to do it. The odds are probably more like two out of ten are able to achieve MOA groups, and the other ones are going to be floating around 1.5 MOA with high quality match ammunition. So not only is there the rifle to factor in, but also the ammunition. Most people are shooting cheap, shitty hunting ammunition, which, and I'm talking like soft points. I have never had good luck with soft points in trying to achieve uh, sub MOA groups. Yes, I've achieved, you know, uh, one group out of let's say four that was just under an inch, but the majority were around 1.5 to even two. And depending on if the load development was off, I was only able to achieve like three MOA. So your results are gonna greatly get worse uh, the worse ammunition you buy. So if you're not using quality match ammunition, your chances go down even more. And not only match ammunition, I mean like I was using some match ammunition in this rifle and guess what? It didn't perform half MOA. It absolutely did not. I think the best with this rifle, I'm obviously going to put it on the screen, was around, I think it was just over an inch. But that was after trying like five, I think it was five or six different brands of match ammunition that's in 308 Winchester. So it's, it's like, even if you do everything, you still might not be able to achieve MOA or sub-MOA groups. So this is the realization that we have to realize is there's a reason why cheap rifles are cheap. You know, there's a reason why you're not able to achieve half MOA with your super budget rifle. Um, it's because those rifles aren't necessarily accurate or you're not using the proper ammunition or your setup is not correct or you didn't torque down your uh, bolts on your rifle or your scope rings, they're not torqued properly or your scope mounts aren't torqued to the uh, rails or your rails aren't torqued down to the receiver. Actually, that's, that's actually a very good step-by-step -step thing that you should in immediately do on all your rifles. <laughs> and it's actually something that I've had, has happened to me quite frequently, <laughs> is I've forgotten to, I'm shooting a group and I'm like, wow, why is it so bad? And then I, after like about, you know, a bunch of wasted ammunition, I'm gonna like wobble the scope, I'm like, damn it. Either I didn't check my rail to the receiver or something went wrong. Typically my scope rings are tight, but that's something I occasionally forget to do is, Torquing the rail to the receiver. The best practice is probably put a dab of blue lock Loctite on each of these screws, torque them in, and you're good to go. And get a torque wrench as well, just so that you never have to really deal with that again. Once you do it once with uh, blue Loctite and a torque wrench, I have never had to redo those again. Also, torquing down your um, your, your screws from, from your stock into your receiver. That is also very important. Those are probably one of the, some of the main things to consider when why you're not able to achieve MOA, half MOA, sub half MOA with your rifle. If your rifle is a super cheap rifle, the odds of you achieving it are, they're not great. They're not great. And I have tried many, many, many rifles. <laughs> the odds greatly increase once you spend over a thousand. I'd probably say the sweet spot is, I mean, okay, so Tika does not ever even answer my emails. So just, just so you guys know that, um, I would say it's probably with the Tika T3X if you want the no brainer, go with Tika T3X Varmint and you probably will never have issues. With the super like base models, the super cheapest models, it's more like, it's not the norm to get sub MOA. Sorry, short rant, but I felt like it was finally necessary to put that in the open. So guys, uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, consider hitting like, consider hitting subscribe and I'll see you at, uh, I guess in the SHOT Show coverage coming in next week. Thanks for watching Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews.